readers, it's Sasha and today I'm going to be filming my mid-year book freak out tag. I can't believe that it's been a year since I made the last one of these. Like this year went by so slow yet so incredibly fast and so like time is a concept that makes no sense. And here we are. There are 13 questions to answer about books that you've read this year so far and I'm really looking forward to answering them and comparing this to my version last year because last year I was really new to YouTube and not the greatest with editing and sound quality and all this stuff and so I'm looking forward to starting this and seeing where it goes and how I do. <laughs> so let's start. So the first question is the best book that you've read so far this year and this has to be The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This book it's like a whole other world of meaning to me for some reason like it hit me so hard. I have never felt the feelings I felt while reading a book before. This is my new favorite book of all time and so if I picked anything else it would just be a lie because this is the best book I've read so far this year. I'm so glad I picked it for the whiners. I loved it <laughs> so freaking much. It was so Good. Next question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2021 and for this I had to go with either Lady Smoke or Ember Queen which are the second and third books in the Ash Princess trilogy by Lauren Sebastian. The first book surprised me in a way that I wasn't expecting. Fantasy hasn't been my favorite lately and I was honestly really shocked with how much I liked the first one and then with the second and third ones I was blown away. I loved the second and third book. They far surpassed the first book and I loved it so much and it is now one of my favorite series of all time like it's so good but those would probably be the best ones that I've read. Next question is a new release that you have not read yet but want to and I chose a few for this one. So the first one I chose was Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Ayamide. So Ace of Spades is a novel, it's kind of like a young adult contemporary murder, not murder, like mystery thriller type story about these two students at a private school whose secrets kind of become well known to everybody. I, as you know, love mystery and thrillers. I think they're really fun. I really like young adult mysteries. I don't have to think too much about it and it's just something that's really easy for me to get through and this one sounds incredible. I've heard nothing but good things about it. It has such an incredible rating on Goodreads and so I cannot wait to read it. I also picked Darling by Kay Ingram as this was the Winer's Book Club pick for June. It did just come out at the end of June but I was kind of in a slump in June and like life and reading and all this stuff and so I wasn't really feeling like picking up the book even though it I really want to read it and I cannot wait to be a part of reading it the club that's read it I don't know what I was going with this but I really do want to read it at some point I just will not be reading it for the month of June and so I had to choose this because it is a queer Peter Pan retelling and it sounds incredible. I also had to choose Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare because this one did come out a little bit further away from today. <laughs> this came out I think in March and I still haven't read it yet and I feel kind of like a Cassandra Clare stan fraud because I haven't but I would like to read it and that's that. Next question is the most anticipated release of the second half of the year. So the first one is To Break a Covenant by Allison Ames. This is supposed to be coming out on the 21st of September and it is kind of like a horror young adult LGBT book that I'm really excited about. It's essentially about this town that had a very bad mine explosion that ended up killing 16 people and this town specifically relies on its haunted reputation to bring in tourists but then witches are a thing and I really like witches. <laughs> I really like witch stories and books and shows and everything like that so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. The next one I'm really looking forward to is All of Us Villains by Amanda Foody. Amanda Foody and Christine Lynn Herman. Isn't she the one that we all hate now? No she's not. I don't think she is. She is. No. Yeah. No. I'm not looking forward to this book as much because Christine Lynn Herman is not an author that I want to support but Amanda Foodie is. I really like her like as a person she seems fun. I haven't read her books but her books seem to have a lot of good representation in them from what I've heard. So now I'm sad <laughs> and this is this is stupid. I'm so upset. Okay it's fine like it's not a big deal. I'll survive I guess. And the last one that I chose was Devil in the Machine by Laura Beth Johnson which is the second book in the Goddess in the Machine duology? Trilogy? I don't know what it's going to be but I believe this one is coming out in August or September and I'm really really looking forward to it. I loved Goddess in the Machine. I thought it was such an interesting sci-fi story and I'm really looking forward to what the second book will bring because the first book had me feeling 
so many different feelings. The plot twists were insane. And so I'm really looking forward to the second book and I can't wait to read it. Next is The Biggest Disappointment of 2021. And for me, that is The Map From Here to There by Emery Lord. So this is the second book in a duology called The Start of Me and You that I read in January. And I love the first book. The first book is one of my favorite books of the year. So I was expecting really fantastic things for the second book, but I was severely let down. And it wasn't a bad book by any means. Like it was a really great exploration on ending high school and moving forward and what it's like to be in a friend group and how that can shift and I really liked that however the first book I don't feel like it needed a second book and I was expecting something really great and I was so let down so if you're gonna read the start of me and you I highly recommend just reading the first book because it's incredible by itself like it doesn't need anything else like it doesn't need a sec it doesn't need the second book it just it could have been fine without it but we chose violence next is the biggest surprise and for me that was got shot by chelsea beaker now this book i still i gave it a three stars but this book shocked me in a lot of ways like it was really hard to read at times it was powerful it was intense it made me feel a lot of different emotions but i wasn't expecting to feel all of the things i felt and it really took me by surprise there were some things that i couldn't look past that were a little bit too gruesome and not gruesome but like too icky <laughs> for me but i definitely really 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 was caught off guard by by this book and the message it taught and the the, the power behind it was really incredible so i do recommend it but there are so many trigger warnings so check out the link in my description for book triggerwarnings.com and I have put all of them in there so if you have any concerns or reservations check there and see if this is something that you would be able to read comfortably actually I don't think you'd ever be able to read this book comfortably I was severely discomforted a lot it was not it was it was good but it was a lot to take in next is favorite new author either debut or new to me and for this i've chosen new to me authors i feel like one of them might be debut but i really don't know so the first one is Kristen hannah and i had to choose her because she wrote my favorite book of all time so i'm officially on the Kristen Hanna hype train and I'm ready to be a part of it. I'm ready for more Kristen Hanna. I'm, I'm so excited. So yeah, her. And then I'm also picking Angie Thomas because I read The Hate You Give for the first time this year and loved it and fell in love with it in so many ways. I thought it was so incredible and I cannot wait to pick up Concrete Rose and On the Come Up and whatever other books she reads or she writes in the future. I'm so excited. And I also chose Namina Forna who wrote The Gilded Ones and I'm choosing this because this was my favorite fantasy I think that I've read so far this year. Singular like first book. This one had a lot of mixed opinions. A lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people just thought it was really average but for me I really really liked it. I really thought the writing was spectacular. I enjoyed the the darkness of it like I don't know it was just like it was gritty it was gruesome and it had all of these aspects that I typically don't gravitate toward in a book but I really really loved it in this one so I also would say her <laughs> new fictional crush so this is difficult for me I don't really crush on fictional people I crush on celebrities if this was new celebrity crush like I would be like bitch we're here but fictional people it's just like I picture them as celebrities in my head because I don't know how to picture people so <laughs> it's just like whatever celebrity like fits that description like I'll usually picture them so I've picked two that I think work for me on a personality level so the first is Ethan from the Unhoneymooners because he is is so funny. <laughs> I loved Ethan. I loved their relationship. The relationship between Ethan and Olive was perfect, but I really liked Ethan. I thought he was a really fun guy. I thought he had good banter. He was fun. He was just all around like what I look for in a person. Like he was that. So that was cute. And also Malachi from With a Fire and High, which is the love interest that Imani is questioning whether or not she should be with. And I thought he was just a really sweet and sensitive and caring guy. And that is something that I always look for. <laughs> like I'm really, really, really into like the soft boys. <laughs> I don't love like the like look at my Harley. Like that's just not that's not me. So I really liked him. He was very cute and nice. Okay, new favorite character. Aside from Ethan and Malachi, because I feel like they're two of my new favorite characters, Theodosia from Ash Princess. I thought she was such a bad bitch boss girl. Love her so much. She was so cool. I loved her. <laughs> There's not much else for me to say other than like she was literally like if I were in a fantasy world, like I would want to be her. She's so cool. <laughs> like not only does she have like these like fire powers, but she's just like, she's such a boss bitch. I love her so much. She's so good. And also Isabel from the Nightingale girl. She was so incredibly cool. Like I want 
to say that I would be like her in that situation. I would want to be like, yeah, like let's, you know, we're, we're fighting, we have to fight, but I don't know if I could, like, I don't know. It's terrifying, it's so scary. And she was so cool and I loved her so much. I also really, really loved Diana from The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. She was the youngest one in the book series, but she was arguably the most interesting <laughs> at points. Sometimes the books did drag on a little bit and she by far exceeded my expectations for characterization in the book. I just thought she was really fun and just an all around really good addition to the story. Next, books that made you cry. So this wouldn't be a Sasha answer if I didn't say The Nightingale. I was sobbing. I finished it in the seat of my car while Noah was buying ice cream in Sobeys and I was sobbing and then he came out and I was fine. I collected myself and it was all good and then we were driving on the way home and then I was just like, but I was sobbing again. So this impacted me in a way that I didn't realize and I was overjoyed with how it impacted me and how I still think about it. And I also cried with the fire on high that was powerful in a different way like it was powerful in a much more empowering and confidence boosting way like i really really loved that i also cried with underneath the sycamore tree by b celeste that hit me hard i was sobbing in my bedroom oh that one was rough that one did the job of getting my emotions up and running again holy crap so good. I've read some really good tearjerker books and I don't really cry that often with books. So having even three that made me cry this year was like, it's so good. And I know there have been more because I I cried with Godshot. I cried with, with The Hate You Give. So there have been more. Next, books that made you happy. So I have to go with The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord, which I mentioned briefly earlier. This was my first five star of 2021 and it absolutely did not disappoint. It was so flippin' fantastic. Like I loved it. It was so cute. It was wholesome and it was just the perfect start to my 2021. Also The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. That also made me extremely happy. It was just such a feel-good story and I, I finished it with the biggest smile on my face. And I don't usually like my emotions don't really get that invested in books but if I've cried or if I've left with a huge smile, I know it's done something powerful. Next is the most beautiful book that you've bought slash received this year. I think I bought With a Fire on High this year, which has to be one of the prettiest books that I have on my shelf. I know for sure the book that Rachel got me for Christmas, which was Anne of Green Gables, a special edition cover. That is stunning. It is beautiful. And it is one of my favorite books that I received this year. It did come after Christmas, so I'm not just being like oh my god no cemetery boys cemetery boys is stunning oh my god that's definitely the one again from rachel so thank you thanks girl that was so kind i love you what books do you need to read by the end of the year so many books ah uh, what would i like to read by the end of the year i'd love to say i've read from blood and ash by jennifer l armentrout because as somebody who profusely declares my love for jla i have still have not read her biggest series to date so that's kind of weird so i'd like to read that I'd love to read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I've heard literally no bad things about it. And so as someone who loves mystery and thriller and all that stuff, I figure like it's the perfect book for me to read. And I think I'd also really like to read Truly Devious as well. I think that would be a really fun book to read and be in the club for. So that is everything. That is all. I tag anybody who wants to do this because everybody's doing this right now. So it's not really like a tag video. It's just what we do in the middle of the year. But yeah thank you for tuning into my video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more content i do post twice a week and i have some pretty fun videos coming up in the month of july that you're not going to want to miss out on and until next time bye readers